Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Today we're going to take a look at this Catalyst 9300 series switch, relatively new addition to Cisco's switching lineup. Uh, and we're going to take a look at something a little outside of the norm. Typically I'd probably be doing some type of CLI demonstration. I'm actually going to go back to something that I've not used for years, and that is the Express Setup, the web-based Express Setup on this switch. See how they're doing with that uh, feature now that we have another series of switch. So let's dive in, check it out firsthand, and go from there. If you've not already done so, hit that subscribe button so you get our latest content. With that being said, if you read the documentation, the hardware implementation guide, I believe it is, or the hardware installation guide, you'll know that the express setup is something that you do through the standard ports on the unit. You power it on. Uh, if you go to the CLI, you'll be at that initial configuration mode uh, type of screen. You don't want to do anything at that screen because as soon as you break past that, the express setup is uh, turned off, right? It's for security reasons as well as just functionality reasons, it's, it's turned off. So what we do is essentially take the switch out of the box or with a blank, uh, a blank configuration fired up. Uh, you're going to want to take a network cable and just plug it into any old port on the front and then you're going to want to jump over to your PC. Your PC is going to get a, uh, uh, obviously you're going to have your PC connected here. You're going to jump over to your PC. You're going to get an IP address via DHCP. And you're going to want to type in 192.168.1.1 uh, into your browser. And the initial uh, setup mode screen will open up. Let's jump over to the PC and take a look at it firsthand. As you can see here, I have the switch opened up. I typed in the IP address and was redirected to the login page. The initial login information is uh, Cisco for the username and then the password is actually the serial number of the unit. So let me find that serial number. It's typically located on a sticker on the chassis. It also is displayed in the CLI if you're watching the CLI uh, as well. But uh, I'm just copying it off the chassis for right now. Once you have it typed in, hit log in now. You'll be redirected to the first step of the configuration wizard. Uh, at this step, type in a username and password. I'm just going to use admin. Click next to the basic device settings. We'll give this thing a host name, cat9k dash, or cat9k. 01. 01. Excuse me. The next piece is if you want to modify the date and time, you can do that. It uh, actually looks good the way it is now. Device management. You can configure an IP address for the device management uh, interface of the switch. This is actually the port on the back of the unit. So we'll give it a IP address and subnet mask. I'm going to leave the default gateway open for now. Click next for site profile. Now site profile is uh, kind of a visual representation of how this switch would live physically in your network topology. Um, you know, access switch, a couple different access switch configurations and a couple different distribution switch configurations. Uh, I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward and do single access switch for now. Uh, if your switch isn't really used in any of these cases, you can use the My Device Doesn't Resemble Any Item in This List option. But uh, we'll, we'll move forward. You have the option to define a VLAN or two VLANs, data and voice, uh, or actually define a list of them as well. So I'm going to do VLAN 100 for data, check the box, and do VLAN 200 for voice. <clears throat> you can also configure some layer 2 parameters here, rapid per VLAN spanning tree, as well as per VLAN spanning tree. If you want to trick out the bridge priority, you can do that. From a general information perspective, you can configure some other, um, you know, options here, domain name, DNS server, DHCP server, so on and so forth, uh, SNMP info. 
Once you're happy with that, there's actually another tab here called Port Security, or Port Specific rather, I'm sorry. You can configure then the uplinks. So in this case, I'm going to configure the 10 gigabit ethernet links as uplinks. I'll make two of those. And I'll then come over to Access, Define VLANs, we'll do 100. And we'll make a couple downlink ports for end hosts. Uh, you can still see that the uplink ports are defined. So with that in place, we will click Day Zero Config Summary. If you expand these options, you'll see the summarized version of what you've entered in. There's the management info, basic switch config, and port configuration. So uplink ports are VLANs 100 and 100 and 200. They're the 10 gig interfaces. There's also the downlink ports, which are accessing VLAN 100. When we're satisfied with these settings, we can click Finish. When you click Finish, it's going to essentially say that your next step is to reconnect to the switch via the management IP address. Uh, so that's going to do it for the configuration wizard. Pretty straightforward, very basic, but it will give you the capability of logging on and going further with this device. So uh, anyhow, check out my next video where we're actually going to check out the web interface after it's configured and I think I might actually run some data through the switch to uh, you know have a little bit more to show. So uh, feel free to check out that video. Thanks for watching this one and we hope to see you again soon.